Basically, the way I was going to do is I was going to like just show some stuff, and then um, we could play with it with whatever remaining time we have. So if everyone wants to go to um, this URL, which is just runway ml, um, and then what will happen is, like, uh, I believe there's just a download runway beta, um, and it'll auto start the download. Try to install it like while I talk, and then like then we'll be all set up because it takes a couple minutes to get set up. You have to like create an account, like whatever, um, and then uh, we'll we'll demo some stuff. Uh, cool. So, um. So for those not familiar with like machine learning or, or how it works really, like I thought I'd like do like a really high level overview of like sort of the things that are involved in machine learning. Um, so like machine learning at its most basic is like three steps essentially. There's like a build, a train, and a test step. And what that means is like, uh, and I'll, I'll go in a little bit deeper into these after uh, this slide where it's like, so building like the thing you do is you actually create a neural network and I'll talk about what that means. Um, but essentially that means like building the different like pieces to create a neural network. Um, the next thing you do is uh, you train it and usually what you need for training is lots of data. So like people will often tell you that machine learning requires like big data, right? Like it requires lots of, lots of content, lots of things. Um, so you have to feed it data and it usually takes time. Um, especially with like image uh, based stuff, it's, it's really, really time intensive. Um, and then the last thing you do is you test it. So like in the case of like data science, that's like confirming that the thing works the way you expect it to or like confirming that like, um, you know, what you tested it on then like has an evaluation set and like it matches with the data you want. Um, in the case of like image making and art, it's more like you just, that's when you start playing with it. Um, so the way I like to think about this is that the people who build net neural networks are like geniuses and experts. Um, the people who train it are generally rich people, um, <laughs> and I'll explain what that means in a minute. Uh, and then the rest of us get to test and play with things. Um, so uh, this is like the most basic of like neural networks, essentially. Um, and uh, I won't get too deep into this because it's like pretty crazy complicated. But this is like what's described as called deep learning. So if anyone talks about deep learning. Um, all they really mean is that like, so on the left hand side here you have what, what are called inputs. Um, so in this case in an image, it's literally every pixel. Um, so you pass every pixel into this image, ne into this uh, network. And on the right is what's called the output. And what that, in this case, this is uh, guessing what uh, this image represents. So this is representing a, a number two. And the output is trying to tell you like, yes, I think that this is definitely a number two. Um, the reason it's called deep learning is because there's a bunch of layers in the middle. Um, so there's two uh, columns in the middle. Um, it's deep because we kind of don't know what's going on in there. Or like what we know that's going on in there is actually like pretty, uh, it's, a, it's sometimes hard for us to access and figure out what's going on. But essentially a neural network takes all these inputs, um, then there's some layers in the middle, and those layers in the middle are trying to define what we call features. Um, so in the case of a number, like a number two, maybe you're maybe it's figuring out that there's a hook. There's always this like top little hook to a two, or there's always like a little like baseline, you know, straight line in a two. That's sort of like what it's figuring out. Um, and the way it figures that that out is sort of like some pretty complicated uh, mathematics stuff um, that we don't need to get into for this. Um, but that's essentially how a neural network works. So you give it inputs, you get an output. Um, and the way that we train things is we feed it lots of data. So this is like the state of the art sort of thing for uh, face generation. And the way that this works is someone's fed this neural network uh, thousands upon thousands of faces. Um, probably about 10,000 is my guess. Um, and they figure out what, like how to generate or like how to architect these middle layers um, to best like get out good results. Um, and some of that comes from like creating new different types of models. Some of it comes from uh, like just having faster processors so it can do more data, um, or it can churn through more data. Um, this is what's called StyleGAN, um, which I can show some of the stuff that I play with with it, um, but that's basically how it works. Um, and then test is like where we get to play with things. Um, so I don't know if anyone has ever played with Edges to Cats, um, but this is, a, um, this is a testable model where someone has trained the model on outlines of cats and, and the cat shapes they make. 
And so this is a way that you can, there's, this is live in the browser. You can actually play and you can draw a shape and it like fills in a cat shape. Um, so, you know, you can try to create a realistic looking cat or you can create like the world's scariest looking cat. Um, uh, and this works. So like this is basically like a way that like now we can make like fun little art types of things with, with these pieces. Um, so I just always like to demo or just show people like cool thing, cool things I've seen that I think people have made with, with machine learning that I think is really awesome. Um, this is like one of my favorite pieces, this bag named Mem Memo Acton. Um, and we'll just watch it because I think it's pretty cool. Wow, that's nuts. It's cool. So trippy. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that's Memo's work. So again, he sort of like trained it on these particular images, and then on like the opposite image. Um, this is Mario Klingemann, who I think is probably like the like leader of like creative uses of machine learning. I just want to ask you when I have a migraine. I'm pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Mm -hmm. um, I can't tell if it's more like what I see when I have my hand or more what I think I look like, what my face mm -hmm. feels like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and this is a guy named Robbie Barrett. So um, he and one of his collaborators, whose names I'm forgetting, um, trained this thing on fashion images, so like fashion runway images. So they took all them. They like silhouetted the image on the runway, and then they produced it. Like then they've like trained a machine to like produce new uh, new fashion images. Um, what I think is really interesting here is he took this image, and they're like, "There's a there's a bag on this guy's leg. Let's actually make that." So they made they like sent this to like it seemed like maybe a sweatshop, and like had them produce like a bag on a guy's leg. And what's funny about this is this actual image is very likely like. It's actually a purse, so it learned how purses work, but it missed the handle, or like it learned that a purse is always in this position, um, but then it doesn't always learn to like add a handle. So it's act. It's just like really interesting. Like you can sort of like backwards understand like how it's thinking. Um, it's like gravity's not constrained. Yeah, it's like gravity's not constrained, or like there's a, there's always times where like someone's hand is there, but like. So it like added like the bag itself and then added a hand, but like it didn't realize like, oh yeah, when there's a bag, there's always like a handle. Um, so I think it's like kind of, it's like funny. And this is like, you'll see this quite often with machine learning that it's like, oh, I get what it thought would happen, but like, that's not real. Um, so yeah. was the project to, sorry, sorry. Um, to, they did the machine learning thing and then they were gonna produce in real life things that were generated? I think it was more like they saw these results and be like, we should just make some of these things. Like, this is so cool, we should just make some. Mm -hmm. um, but the right picture on the right came after the picture on the left. Yeah, exactly, yep, yep. <laughs> I, like, I like how they the machine attached it to the leg. That's yeah, that's really well cool. it's like, again, you think about it, like if yeah. you see photos, it probably always yeah. saw it there, right? And maybe yeah. this is a case of where like, 
in this particular image, someone had red pants on or someone, yeah. and like, where like the bag was actually maybe in front of someone's leg and it's like sort of picked that up as like a thing that happens, but it doesn't it really understand. Yeah, yeah, exactly, but it doesn't understand how it all fits together, yeah. Um, and this is one of my favorites, which is called Ramen to Faces. Oh my God. Which is, <laughs> so what you're seeing in this, the first three columns here, you're seeing converting ramen to, to a face and then converting that face back to ramen. Oh and this is basically how this model works, is it almost works like uh, Google Translate, where it tries to translate in multiple steps. Um, so it goes English to German, German back to English, and you get like these slight different results. And the last three columns are faces to ramen, um, which I actually like the, the bottom corner oh, like, is so creepy and okay. weird. Horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. <laughs> it actually reminds me of this like type of art that was like, where they would make art and it was like faces with like an eggplant nose. Yes. Like, yep. Yeah. I, I know exactly. It's not that off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, some yeah, of them you're like, features, like, yeah, like, some of them are pretty off. interesting. Um, like I think this one, like uh, third row down, like and then uh, the right hat, the right side, like you can kind of see how I thought that that woman's eye is like the egg. Like it's just really interesting yeah. to to think about like how it converts these things. Yeah. Um, and then this is some of the work that I produced. So this is that same model um, from the previous Ramen to Faces, and this is um, birds to flowers. And uh, so on the top corner, it's converting birds to flowers. And the bottom, it's converting flowers to birds. So like, you can see how it's like trying to like put birds in these shapes, right? And it's like pretty weird and distorted, but that's sort of how it works. Um, so this is like basically I trained this model, like giving it, I fed it a whole bunch of images of old illustrations of birds and then old illustrations of flowers. And this is sort of what the model is like, cool, here's how these two things convert. <laughs> Um, this is a thing called StyleGAN. Um, you've probably seen this where it's like upload a selfie and convert it to a Van Gogh painting. Um, this is the same concept as that. It's just giving it different inputs and different styles. Um, so I tend to think the Van Gogh slash Kandinsky like face filters are like kind of cheesy. This is a way to like find a way to like maybe create more artistic value from that. Is that a selfie? No, this is, no, so I upload flower <laughs> illustrations and I apply textures to them. The one um, on the right like, really looks like a bear to me. Mm. Yeah, a little bit. Like the, the nose, that black, type, like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it looks like there's a paw coming out. Yeah, no, no, no. Wow. Nose, yeah, eyes, okay. paw, paw. Okay, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then this is, so this is that same, the, this face translations, it uses that model, which is called StyleGAN. Um, oops, let's see, that didn't work. And this is again, trained on flowers. And so the model that this produces, it actually produces like a dimensional space. And all this is doing is like animating inside of that space. Um, so there's 512 dimensions in this space, which like our human brains can't even process. But basically imagine a 3D space and imagine that like every frame of this image is a different point in that space and you're just sort of moving through it. And that's sort of what's happening here. And all these spaces have different features. Um, so in the case of like the face feature, people have found the face feature that actually like uh, changes someone's smile. So it goes from like a smile to a frown. So you can actually use, if you can imagine like sort of a line within that space, you can actually animate anyone's face to go from a frown to a smile. Um, which is also very creepy. So, you know, we're in we're in a weird world. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what Apple is going to do with FaceTime? Mm -hmm. No. They're going to make so the camera is like above the screen. Or wait, no, they're looking at the screen instead of the camera, and oh, you can God. tell. They so for it. they're going to make your eyes look like up at the camera. Oh, <laughs> oh my jeez. <laughs> yeah. I hate that for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this is a thing called um, next frame prediction. So basically the machine is trying to take, it takes an anim, it takes a video and it learns what each frame is and then it tries to like guess what the next frame should be. So like in this case, it's clearly learned like sort of how like an underwater aquatic scene, <laughs> like how motion works in it, yeah. but it has yeah. no concept of what a fish is. Yeah. So it like demolishes the fish, but like it looks underwatery, right? Yeah. Um, so again, like one of the, one of the things about machine learning is actually not very smart, right? It's like, there's so many things that like, 
you know, you hear AI is going to take over the world, and I can definitely tell you, like, based on the stuff I work with, it is not going to happen anytime soon. Um, but I think it's, I think it's really interesting to sort of explore like what these things can do and can't do. Um, so yeah, you're probably thinking like, none of this has to do with design right now, and that's true. Um, but there's also, I'm sure some of you have seen this, which is that um, Airbnb made a tool recently um, where this is like a very complicated screen to describe, but in the top left, top right hand corner are basically going to be uh, his sketches and we'll see some sketches soon, I think, so assuming it's playing. Yeah, so there's some sketches he drew and the machine is now converting them to high fidelity layouts. So again, it basically is training, like you, you do a bunch of sketches, you train the sketches compared to uh, the images that you're seeing, and then it converts them. <gasps> so we may eventually have a future where like this is the how we'll design things. So that works consistently? It's a demo, so yeah. you never really know how consistent it works. Yeah. Um, one of my friends actually worked on this project and I think it was pretty it was pretty consistent. Okay. It would like you basically have to train it per person. Um, so right. like Anytime a new designer would have to get on board, you'd be like, okay, draw me 500, draw, draw me 50 sketches, exactly. Draw me 50 sketches of what a thing should look like, and then we'll train it on what it should be. Um, so, you know, again, it's like a little harebrained right now, but I think it's like, could be pretty yeah. easily become the future of like, I mean, how great would that be? Like, we could draw on a jam board and then be like, cool, like, let's just generate some mock ups of these things. Um, the other sad fact is you can't do any of this in runway um, yet. Uh, but I did make these in Runway, uh, <laughs> which again also doesn't make me feel like this is actually a viable, uh, at least future right now. Um, but I painted some Freddies using different shapes. Um, so uh, that's what I ha that's all I have for the lecture, and then I can quickly just show like how how you can play with Runway if people are interested. Any questions? So would we use that fish for example, the fish one. Yeah. They train the, net the network to predict <coughs> next frames versus not next frames in a more general sense. Then you just feed it the fish video and get the next frame and then just keep doing the same thing? Yeah, so the way that works, it does take, basically it takes one frame uh -huh. that is real, then it purses <gasps> the next frame, uh -huh. and then you take that next frame, which yeah. is also fake, and you, will, and you and it predicts it off of that. Okay, yeah. cool. So, there, I've seen, um, again, a guy like Mario Klingeman, I've seen <coughs> ways in which he's trained a model to be much more um, much more closely accurate to what, actually, I can pull up the video of, of something like he's done. Too. Yeah, it's a little bit, um, it's much closer to how sort of he, it's much, more, it's much closer to what you would expect the video to be. Yeah, but he has like the resources to train neural networks. He works at Google. Okay. So yes, he has many, many, uh, many, many resources. Title again? Isn't this something kind of ridiculous? Um, I don't know. I think he's just like he's a part of their creative lab yeah, in, in Europe. Yeah, I consider that ridiculous. <laughs> so this is um, he's trained this on fireworks. That's cool. So again, it doesn't look like a real firework, but you can see what the machine has sort of learned, right? It's like it learns that there are explosions, and then it learns that there are things that streak out from those explosions. Um, and like the fading patterns. Yeah, and that it fades away eventually. Yeah. Um, I think what he's also doing is he's every frame he's also zooming in a, in a little bit. So like there's sort of like a zoom, mm -hmm. and you can sort of see like as it gets bigger, as like things come come closer to you, or whatever. So um, yeah, like there are ways in which you can train this to be a little bit more accurate, or you find the right data set that like does that produces something like this. Like I don't know what's going on now. You probably just like wait. Google doesn't own Instagram. I was gonna say like you could just look at like all the videos that people post on the 4th of July and then the next day I have a training set. Yep. So literally what I did is I just go to YouTube and like there's a thing called like three hours of underwater fish and relaxing music. Yeah. I just like use YouTube download, downloaded that video, split it up into like 30 seconds and then that's what I trained on. Oh, so you trained the underwater thing? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, I'm currently teaching a class uh, up in New York that like teaches a little bit more about how all this stuff works and like actually like has, um, I teach some, some art students and design students how to train things um, and then how to build on it. Um, one of the things that um, is like kind of, uh, the, the biggest hindrance to this stuff is it's pretty expensive to do this. 
Um, so I use like a cloud service that's called Paperspace, um, and it ends up being about 78 cents um, a minute, or not a minute, 78 cents an hour to run one of their servers. Um, so in the case of, um, in the case of this video, this video took about a week and a half to train. So if I say 10 times 24 times 78, it cost me $180 to produce that video. So you trained, wow. Oh, you trained basically, you took a bunch of like plant photos and you're like, hey, these are plant photos. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you provide as counter examples? Is it noise or is it like non-plant photos, like real photos? Um, the way style game works is it just it only looks at features in the data set you give it. Oh, okay. Um, so you basically just give it a huge data set of images. Like I think I gave it like about fourteen hundred images, uh -huh. and it just like over time sort of like learns. So it learns really basic features first. It learns like colors and yeah. it learns like sort of shapes, and then as it trains more and more, it gets it, it learns more and more detail. Um, and you could, they generally recommend that you run this at like on the server I'm using with the data set I have and at the size I have. It's like you should run it for about uh, two and a half weeks. I quit it early because I felt like I enjoy, I was happy with the results. Yeah. Um, but like clearly, like not everyone is going to have one hundred eighty dollars or one hundred ninety dollars to like train these things and like just see what happens. Because um, a lot of times, like these also won't produce good results yeah. and the reason they don't produce good results is like maybe you gave them like a really messy data set right like this comes from books in a library um, and I have to download that data set I have to clean out all the text pages I have to like crop and align them all so they're pretty much in the same yeah so like basically what happens is it's a page that is like this very tall narrow set but this data set or this particular model wants square images um, so I have to like stretch all those images. So when you actually play this, like you'll see like, you see where the edges are stretched on the sides, right? Um, so yeah, like you'll see all those bands on the side. And all I did is like, I did it very like cheaply, which is just like, for all thousand images, just take the last row of pixels and just stretch them. Yeah. Um, I could have done it a cleaner way and maybe gotten some slightly nicer results, but like that's sort of how, it, it's like, again, it's like, to do all of this in like a perfect manner would require me to spend a week in Photoshop right. cleaning stuff up, and it's just like not worthwhile in that in that sense. Um, but again, it's like this is like there the hindrance is like you need a lot of time and you need a lot of money um, to do some of this stuff. So what Runway does actually <gasps> is they say like, well, we won't let you train stuff. We'll let you use other people's models. Um, so Runway is basically like. They're like a small startup. Um, the three founders went to like a, uh, a technology and art school in New York, and now they're raising money um, for this. So they raised money. They're like trying to build this thing out as sort of like a startup. Um, and what they've basically done is all these models like basically live on GitHub. Um, and like the hope is that artists don't have to learn GitHub. They don't have to learn how to. Uh, procure servers, like to do anything else, um, but they can play with pre-built models. So once you log in and you create an account, um, they give you ten free dollar, ten dollars of credits. Um, I have a couple more just because I've like I know them and they like gave me some extra stuff for this class um, that I'm teaching. Uh, but so they charge five cents a minute. So oops. Um, so that's. Uh, 200 hours? 200 minutes. 200, <laughs> minutes. 200 minutes you would get uh, for free for this thing. Um, and it doesn't take more than a couple minutes to like play with these things. Um, but I can show you some of my favorite ones. There's a ton of models in here, um, and they all do different things. And I think the thing is also you kind of have to know how they're meant to work to be able to use them. Um, so I didn't show zebras to horses, um, but this is the model that um, I used to do. This is what they use for faces to ramen. And this is what they, I used for birds to flowers as a thing called Cyclegan. Um, so if you were to like play with this, you could, um, <gasps> I think the, mo so if you go here, they have a console workspaces, which is basically a way to like, uh, like manage sort of all the different pieces you're working on at any one time. Um, so over here, there are all the models. So there's horses to zebras, apples to oranges, zebras to horse, winter to summer. So basically what you would do is, and I'll do this with a different one because I don't have a picture of a horse right now. Um, but like you run this thing, you upload an image of a horse and it will spit out an image of that horse as a zebra. Um, 
So like again, like kind of funky, like you know, it doesn't feel like a, pr- a design production tool, but like maybe I think maybe one day it will be uh, more like that for them. Um, but I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorite ones um, that are that are like fun to play with. And again, if you have two minutes for free, like you can just mess with it and, and have fun. Um, this is a one called Attention Gan. Um, it says turn text descri- descriptions of scenes into synthesized images. <laughs> so um, here I'll show you how this one works. <gasps> so this is now like basically behind the scenes. It's like starting up a, a server, um, downloading all the assets it needs, and like getting set up. Um, so now it's running. Uh, so here the input is a piece of text and the output is a preview image. Um, does someone want to give me a scene they want to see? Five people sitting at a table. <laughs> it's not bad. What happens if you add eating lunch? Eating lunch? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so the way this model works is they have a ton of images. They get their research assistant slash intern to write uh, sentences describing those, and they train it. So they like so basically the machine the model learns. When I see this word, it should probably be something that looks like this in the scene. But like again, like it it probably learned table. It probably learns eating means food, and like so it's just like superimposed like red texture onto like yeah. So one of my so the one that I always the one the one I always go to is um, a car parked on the beach. Lol. So it gets a beach. <laughs> Pretty well, like it like has clearly learned beach. Um, the car is like so. So you can run this many times. You can like slightly tweak language and get a different image. And like sometimes the car looks like a street sign, which just clearly tells me that like when they uploaded images, they're like, oh yeah, like it learned like this is what a where a car should live. Yeah, it doesn't learn not car. It learns like this is or it basically learns a picture, and it doesn't necessarily know how to capture car versus street scene versus other things so like this is just kind of fun like so i have a, so the guys the the workshop studio that i that i teach this class out of is um he's an illustrator named braulio amato and he just he makes like he basically makes a poster a day for like various clients so he loves this stuff because he can just throw in a sentence and get an image back and then he can play with it in photoshop and like do other things with it so again like if you really want to create a real image, like this is not the way to do it. But if you want to create sort of funky, like almost Dadaist ideas, like this is a really interesting model to work with. It looks like an SD card. Yeah. Um, so what was the timing there? Like was the minutes like the time from when you yeah, started that off? session? Yeah, so it starts basically like, let me go back to that real quick. Um, which one was it? This one, attention again. Um, so you can see my credits here. It looks like I used maybe 15, se- 15 cents of credits. Mm-hmm. So basically from the second I press this uh-huh. button until I hit stop, it's running. And it counts, like, it probably rounds up because let's be honest, that's how they make money. Right, right, right. So like, yeah, but again, like, between that, it <gasps> cost me 15 cents that is actually not my money, but like, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like another thing where like, yeah, do you really want to like spend a lot of money on this stuff? Maybe not. Um, I'll show another one which I think is really funky, which is called Spade Coco. Um, a lot of people have been playing with this one recently because, so most of these models are actually made by <coughs> NVIDIA, which is the graphics card company. And the reason that they have a team that works with machine learning is because graphics cards are the best way to process images in these settings. Um, so they have like a whole library and a bunch of other stuff to like basically <gasps> these things. So they have a whole research team that like is exploring like different like things to make. Um, you'll also notice that some of these things have like pretty good video game applications, which is another reason why like they're really big in the video game space. So like it's helpful that if they can do some of the stuff for that. Um, this is a thing called Spade Coco. Could you train the model that you trained using the graphics card if you had one, or do you have one? Um, I could. 
the cost of the graphics cards that they use, that are, that are generally used on these things, um, a graphics card for this type of work um, will generally cost about $1,800. So it's a question of how often am I going to use it? Yeah. How quickly is it going to become out of date? Yeah. Versus how much time do I want to spend? <laughs> like, how much time do I want to spend building my own Linux box? Because they all, they all run on Linux. Um, doing my own management of like software, like those sort of things. Yeah, yeah. It kind of balances out. I've generally heard people just say like, Unless you're using it 24-7, it's not worth it. Okay. Um, so I've started looking into it, but at the moment I'm not really. Um, so this is Spade Coco. Um, Spade Coco runs... So the idea here is that um, you can draw a bunch of uh, different things using these colors, uh, using just flat color, and it will then um, put the image in that place. Um, so once this is running, I'll show you what that, I'll show you what that sort of looks like. Um, so I can never draw half these things, but I can draw a bicycle, I think. Um, so you draw some wheels. Um, and then, got what, the fork. Got your seat. Yeah. You've got your handlebars. <laughs> so it, it, it's not too bad. It's um, not. No, exactly. And like, so there's a ton of different things here. Like, OK, there's a street sign. So let me draw a big old street sign here. I don't know what that is. <laughs> hmm. Not the street sign I would have expected, right? Um, Draw a giraffe. Let's draw a giraffe. I don't even know what a giraffe really looks like. Like. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing is like it's kind of funny because it's like, how do people actually do this? It's like a dog, but with a really long hair. Yeah, I guess so, right? Yeah. Oh wow! But look at the texture is not bad. Yeah. Oh my god! I so apparently I'm good at drawing giraffes, you know. Um, <laughs> Definitely. I also don't know what a giraffe's tail looks like. So, I yeah. But, so anyway, so this is like, again, like, uh, you know, this might be good for shapes. What I've actually seen really recently, and let me see if I can pull up an example of this. I was looking at this last night. Um, actually, what is it? It's, so NVIDIA also has one of these. So this is, um, so it works pretty well with landscapes. And I've seen like um, storyboard artists basically use this as a way to quickly storyboard like scenes that people can work with. Um, so it's pretty interesting. People ever like stack these networks that be the output of one into another? Yep, so actually let me, um, it feels like there could be one that they train just to like make the images more crisp and then oh yeah so actually so <laughs> so that's actually a model um, that is called super resolution um, and so super resolution uh, works so you can actually give it a really small JPEG like that say that's like 256 by 256 you can run it through this model and it'll output a 1200 by 1200 image. Huh. And it blows up the image in a way that actually produces new detail. Yeah. Rather than just like Photoshop, which would basically make it blurry or try to guess what detail exists. Um, so actually, let me pull up that one. Because this one's actually like, I use this one on like non-artwork stuff <gasps> all the time. Um, let's see, let's yeah, so this is, um, so you can sort of see here, like this is, it actually produces new detail oh, wow. um, when it's uplo up resing images. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's... <laughs> yeah, <it's happening. laughs> I mean, that's... Again, since so much of this ends up being used for surveillance, like zoom and enhance on someone's yeah. license plate could actually be a thing yeah. that you could do with this now. Um, yeah, so these are, again, they're trained. So basically what you do is you train it on, if you have high res images, you then, in Photoshop, downsample them to make them smaller. Mm -hmm. 
So you have both, you have the, the truth yeah. of a yeah. high res and the truth of a low res, yeah. and then you train them together. And then, so literally, if you went out and like, you know, I'm sure the police have already done this, right. gone and photographed a ton of license plates, yeah. so you could actually read it and then downsample it, uh -huh. um, you could then get a realistic translation between low res, unreadable license plate to high res, readable license plate. Um, scary. It is, it is scary. scary. Like, it is, it is yeah. So like, like <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the truth of this is, so much of this ends up being used for surveillance. It's pretty creepy. Like again, I generally will be like, please don't do any faces in my class because I think faces is like a like a very like perverse topic yeah. because you'll you'll notice like a lot of these demos like they only produce white faces. Right. And it's like, oh, well, why? Because yeah. it's only been trained on white faces. Yeah. Or um. Yeah, it's also like, you know, a case of like, if you train it on faces, you can then generate a face. Like, who's to say people aren't also out there like photographing people with a, with a mask over their face and then photographing their face and then being like, cool, now I've got those two together, so now I can figure out who, what someone should look like without a face or without a mask on their face and get their real face. Like, lots of like pretty dark possibilities of this thing, which is why I generally just do it to make weird shit. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, but it's again, it's also like, I feel like the more people that explore these things, the more likely you are to also realize that like, <laughs> these are not that smart, and like you can under you can imagine how people are, are abusing them as much as you can see how people are like actually creating with them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there's like some really cool things here, but also some really dark things. Um, but like part of what I'm doing is just like hoping that people go and play with it and sort of understand like a little bit more about it. Um, yeah, so you can install this uh, again. You get ten dollars for free. You can play around. Um, there is so the stuff that style transfer that I was talking about is, is available in here. Um, so if you want to like play with something like upload a selfie, upload a, a, a painting you like and see what happens. Um, there's actually four different models of style transfer and I couldn't tell you what each of them does differently. So you could play with those. Um, yeah, there's a lot. So you were asking about like do people like like uh, chain these things together. Yeah. So that segment uh, segmentation thing I was showing you also has a reverse, which will take an image and create and turn it into segmentation. Huh. So what I was trying to find is Janelle Shane, who's like um, a writer who works in like really like she makes really funky like fun. She again like plays with like how stupid machine learning is. She does a lot of text generation. Bye. Um, yeah, of course. So she will do a lot of stuff. But what she did. Whoa. I'm not even sure what this is. I'll have to go back and look at this one. She trained the machine on Star Wars, which clearly she does a lot of work here. Yeah. This was like last week she did this, and already there's like 30 new things uh -huh. in here. Um, oh, this is a fun one. So someone took Mario Brothers. Oh, so cool. Let me make this bigger. Someone took Mario Brothers, and they ran it through this. Really? OK. Thanks, Twitter. Yeah. Um, so they ran it through that uh, shape de that shape detection or segmentation detection network, and then ran that through like Gauguin. Oh, yeah. So what it does, it actually sort of removes Mario because it doesn't know how to read Mario. It's like a dystopic, distorted Mario. But it like reads in like it reads in like this the Whoa, it knows the clouds, what? it knows these other things. It's like really kind of fun. Um, I've also seen like people take like uh, like what was um, Duke Nukem? What game is that? I mean, that's uh, so Doom, is that what it's called? Uh, yeah. Doom. So someone took like all the photos of Doom and they, they so they trained a network on a real faces and then 8-bit pixel faces. So they're able to convert all the Doom characters to real, uh, real looking people, which was super creepy. Yeah. Um, but they were able to do it. Um, but yeah, people, people in games like love this stuff. Like there's like whole Reddit uh, <laughs> channels devoted to like converting games into other things using machine learning. Um, it's like a very big area because, you know, for a, for a person working in games, if they could convert like flat shapes into textures, like yeah. that would save them a ton of time in their world. That's awesome. Cool, yeah. All right, great. Yeah, I think everybody has to run. Um, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, thank you. Let me know. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course.